Well, hey guys, today we're going to be looking at something a little different. It's a surplus robot I picked up, uh, actually at an antique store downtown, which is very strange. I was uh, walking down the street and saw this big cart full of old robots. Um, so I bought all of them, and this is one of the ones I bought. I'm going to go ahead and take this camera down real quick so I can give you a quick overview of the robot. Let you guys take a look at it. This is the Teach Mover, the Microbot Teach Mover here. And it comes with this little training pendant here that you train it with. Uh, there's a power supply there. In the back, which I'm not going to Okay, I'll spin it around a little bit. You can see there's some uh, RS-232 ports back here for uh, hooking up a computer interface. I haven't been able to find any software. Uh, one of the cool things about this robot, if you notice, there's no motors all the way up. It's all wires. And all the servo motors are down here, down here in the base and it controls all these pulleys and uh, all these little wires. Um, so it, it keeps everything up here real lightweight. So that's pretty cool. That is the Teach Mover. This thing retailed for a couple of thousand dollars back in the day. It, it's from the 1980s. So let me pick this back up. And plug in so I don't lose juice. So it's, it's from the 1980s, 1983 era, so uh, not expecting it to be perfect. A small coffee spillage here. But I've been playing around with it a little bit, and uh, I did have to make a few repairs on it. On the, just this camera down, took a look. On the teach pendant itself, which is this little guy, uh, these two buttons right here were broken. Like whenever the, whenever I would mash on them, it was just basically mush. these two buttons here. Um, so I actually had to take this thing apart and desolder these buttons from the uh, board and just realign these two little silver discs and it actually worked after that. Um, on the back of the unit where of the TeachBot itself, let's see if I can get you guys back there. Ah, forget it. I can't. Usually I need a few more camera angles here. There we go. But also on the back of the uh, TeachBot itself, I did have to reconnect the cable. The Teach Control pendant wasn't working at first. It was like totally dead. All I had to do was open up the bottom and plug the cable in and all was working fine. So I'm going to give you guys just a quick example of how the TeachBot works. Hopefully this will be pretty visible from my other camera there. Let's see. Yep, yeah, that's in view. That's in view. Okay. So what I have here, got a lot of bottles. Got a box I'm going to set right here. This should be in frame go and I'm going to pick an arbitrary spot on the desk that I'm going to pick up bottles from which will say right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to train the robot to actually pick up a bottle 
deposit in the box, come back, pick up another bottle, deposit in the box. And I'll show you guys how that works. First of all, we need to power up the power supply. Okay, it automatically in train mode. And first thing I want to do is clear, and I do that by holding down mode and clear. Light goes out on mode, that lets me know it's cleared. And I'll go ahead and give you guys a view of the pendant while I'm programming it. Otherwise, it might not make much sense what I'm doing. Go. All right. Okay, so now we're going to go to train mode. And I'm going to get it, just get the robot to a reasonable starting position. It's kind of in a weird spot right now. And I tell you, operating these robots is kind of tricky. <laughs> Takes a little getting used to. So we'll call this the start position. So to make that a position, you just hit record. And it'll record that first step. And I'll go ahead and put a bottle down. So we have a test sample here. And then we'll go ahead and move into position. And you can take all the moves you want. Can store 53 mark positions. And I am not good at this. I need to open up my jaws here. Okay, then I'll come around here. And I need to rotate this guy down a little bit. Come down some more that position, come down some more, I'll record that position, and now here is where it gets a little interesting, I can actually hit, I can actually hit grip, by pressing mode, grip, it will automatically apply the amount of pressure it needs to actually grip whatever it is. Then I'll go ahead and record that. Go back to train mode. Then I just need to lift it up and make my way over to my destination. I'll go ahead and record. So lift up, drop down, record. Then I need to release the grip, record. And now at this point, Hopefully, if I've done everything right, I should be able to hit mode, run, and it should go ahead and pick up bottles. far so good. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake because I didn't go high and record. So it looks like we're probably going to run into an issue here. It's probably going to hit the box. Might not. No, it cleared. All right, it's good. There we go. Drop it in. And then we'll do our next bottle.
And of course the idea is here, this is an assembly line situation where you have a conveyor belt coming by with bottles, uh, performing some type of action, and then putting them in a box, and then another bottle comes along. You can see it's amazing how the precision of the stepper motors is so good after all these years. And we're talking about some pretty tight tolerances here. Go ahead and take my small camera down. I'm going to do another And bam, it's done. And it'll continue to just go on that same path. There's some things you can do, like branching statements that I haven't really investigated. Like it's gonna go to grab something right now and it's gonna pinch down and it won't find anything. But it still goes through with its own program, just like it was supposed to do. You could actually put in a branching statement there for it to do something else, like stop or search at a different location or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm gonna show a few more demonstrations, so this isn't the last one, but I thought this was pretty cool for a first uh, introduction to the MicroBot TeachMover. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.